Welcome to Headlight Revolution, where we go over some of the latest and greatest in lighting technology. It seems like every single day we have another Toyota Tundra back in here for another lighting upgrade. In this video, we're gonna review the brand new Morimoto 4 Banger pod lights. We're gonna install them on the A-pillar brackets and show you how to mount them in the front bumper. So follow me and let's get started. Before we dive into the install of these LED pods on the Tundra behind me, let's tell you a little bit more about why the Morimoto 4 Banger is so great. First things first, there's two pod lights that you need to be aware of. The entry level, which Morimoto calls the NCS pod, they use Nichia chips and it's super bright, has the same beam pattern as their higher end model, the HXB or HX Boost. They use an OSRAM chip. Those things are stupid bright. And if you get the beam pattern that is a white wide version, it is the brightest one that we have ever tested here at Headlight Revolution. Now the NCS and the HXB both come in three different beam patterns. They have the wide beam pattern, they have a combo beam pattern, and they have a spotlight beam pattern. All three beam patterns are great, however the one that decimates all is the wide version. 80% or more of our customers buy the white wide version, so that is definitely something to consider, especially if you're gonna mount it in something like a fog light. Now if you wanna see how these pod lights stack up against the rest of the competitors out there, Chris Nelson does an in-depth review where he compares these against style dynamics, rigid industries, and so on. So if you wanna see how we came to the conclusion of these being the best, be sure to watch that video. Now all of these pod lights and all the driving beam patterns come with either an amber version or a white version. So the higher end Osran chips that are used in the HXB four bangers, those are a more yellow look. And when you use the NCS four bangers, they look a little bit more amber. That's because the NCS uses those Nichia chips. And Nichia chips, they do come in a yellow, whereas the Osran chips do not come in a yellow. One thing to note, in all of our testing, the amber versions always came in slightly less than the white versions. That's because the light passing through that yellow lens, it loses a little bit of its luminosity. Since the NCS chip, that entry level four banger, uses a yellow chip passing through the yellow lens, it doesn't quite lose as much lumens. So that is something to consider. Now as far as street legalities go, that NCS chip, if you do mount it at a negative three degree aim, it does become compliant with the latest SAE F3 regulations. Unfortunately, the HXB is not street legal because it's so dang bright. And it's up to you to decide what's more important for your build. Now, what about the reliability? With all of the testing that we have done so far, we have not had any issues. They have an IP69K rating, which means they're totally waterproof. Also, they have a limited lifetime warranty, so they've gotta be pretty good. As far as dimming down goes, when you guys are driving at over four and a half miles an hour, you actually don't lose as much loss of light as you will see in some of our testing or in our other videos. So be sure to note that they don't actually lose but 8% of the brightness when you're driving over four and a half miles per hour. The last thing to note about these four bangers real quick is that they have about a 30% smaller footprint than that of all of the competitors out there. So if you're mounting them in say one of the custom brackets on the front bumper in any of your vehicles, they're gonna fit so much better, like an OEM plus look. Now that you've decided that the Morimoto four banger is right for your Tundra, let's send it over to Morimoto where they first start out putting those pod lights in the fog lights. So first off, we're going to install the fog light replacements, which is very easy, very simple. As you see, we already have one already pre-installed. So first off, you're going to get the Morimoto, depending on which one you have. So you're gonna be taking this small little metal piece. Go ahead and get it out of the bag for you. And this is gonna go on the very bottom of the four banger. So first off, you're going to uninstall these two bolts. All right, so once you got those two bolts undone, you're literally gonna take the metal bracket and line it up with the base of the four banger. Now, when you're installing this in the kit, it actually comes with two extra longer bolts. So we're just gonna put that right in there. Then we're just gonna tighten those bad boys down. All right, and then you're going to take the bracketry, make sure that this is gonna be the base part of your fog um, bracketry. So all it's gonna do is literally slide right in just like so. And then you're gonna take three of the bolts that came in the kit, and we're just going to put that on there loosely for now. We'll tighten that up at the very end. So now that you got the sides in, there is a slotted area. So this is basically so you can adjust the aim of your four banger 
which is a really cool feature as well. Now that you got the four banger in your new bracketry, we're gonna head over to the truck and show you how to install it in your Tundra. So before we get onto the install, we're gonna give it a little bit more clearance so we can get to the fog light area. So we're going to turn the wheel left or right depending on what side you're doing the install on. All right, now that you got the wheel turned and you have clearance to this plastic piece, you're gonna need a couple tools with this. You're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket, a 12, and then also some kind of wedge to get this plastic piece out. So first off, we're going to go ahead and remove the two 10 millimeter bolts that are on the side. All right, now that you got those two 10 mils out, there is a little plastic piece in the very back of the cavity of the fender well, and we're just gonna take the little wedge and get that piece out. Easy as that. Okay, now that you got done with the fender well area, we're going to go up underneath and we have the two tens, one on the inner, one on the outer, and then two 12s. So now that you got all the bolts out and everything, this is probably one of the hardest part of the uninstall slash install is getting this plastic piece and shimming it out, so bear with us. All right, now that you got the plastic piece out, we're gonna reach in and uninstall the OEM fog light. All right, so first thing you're going to is take off the OEM harness off of it, and there's literally only one Phillips head in here, so it's on the very back part of this bracket. So all you have to do is unscrew it and then we're just gonna pop this thing right out. All right, so we're just gonna remove this screw all the way and then the OEM will just pop out just like so. So next up, we're going to put our four banger in here. Before we do the install, there's actually an accessory um, harness for this. So this basically will connect to your OEM harness and then it'll allow you to connect your four banger onto the harness as well. So now we're gonna put our Morimoto four banger in there. Pretty easy fit. It's got to finesse it a little bit. And then we're just gonna put that bolt right back in. Just like so. Now that everything is installed and plugged in, we're going to go ahead and test out the four banger real quick and then put the plastic piece back on and then move over to the driver's side. All right, now that the fog lights are installed, we're gonna move up to the A pillars. We're gonna start on the driver's side and go ahead and install the bracketry for the A pillar four bangers. So first off, what we're gonna do is make sure that we do not shift this hood. Most of the time, the tundras are pretty good, but what we're gonna do just to be safe we're gonna just take two pieces of tape and put it on the outside of the OEM hood bracket. And then we're going to take a marker and mark the positioning to make sure that everything's properly aligned when we get done with the install. And of course it ain't gonna be perfect. We're not painting a full vehicle. You just wanna make sure those lines do line up pretty good though. And of course my line's gonna be in the center. So now we're gonna unscrew these two bolts. You don't have to take them fully out. You just have to kind of loosen them so you can slide the bracket underneath it. And then you're gonna take our Morimoto A-pillar bracket. Before you install this though, we're going to install the plastic clips. So this basically holds the Morimoto four banger harness in place on the A-pillar bracket. All right, so these little plastic pieces, they do go in directionally, do not get that wrong. So you literally are going to push them in and then the clips are gonna be vertical on the outside just like so. And there's gonna be two of these, boom and you're good to go. All right, so once you're done with that, you're going to literally slide it in place. When you're tightening this down, the bracket will actually somewhat move out. So make sure you're holding the bracket in place and then tighten it up. So we're gonna just tighten this down, just like so. Everything's still lined up. We're gonna remove that tape. All right, now that you got the brackets on, you're literally gonna do the exact same thing on the passenger side. Once you're done with that, we're gonna move on to the harness. I know it looks a little complicated, but I promise you it's fairly simple. So first thing with the harness, we're going to actually mount and position the relay in the engine bay. So for the Tundra, we're going to drill a very small hole right beside where the ground area is beside the battery. So let's get to doing that real quick. All right, so we're just gonna take a small little drill bit. And like I said before, we're just gonna take a little hole and drill that out. 
And then with the relay, very important guys, make sure that this is installed vertically and not horizontally. So where we put that hole, it's gonna literally place it down in there. Now that the relay harness is mounted properly, we're going to go ahead and run the light tube. This is actually for the driver's side light and light one will be running across the cow and across the engine bay and that will plug up to light one. So with the light two harness, we're literally going to run it up underneath this plastic trim piece that's on the side fender of the truck and it fits just nice. And just tuck it up underneath there. And then you're gonna have, of course, some excess. We're just gonna pull it fully through and then once we're done, we'll pull some of the excess back into the engine bay. So we'll go ahead and just lay that right here for now. And we're going to go ahead and run the long part of the harness, which is like I said before, we're gonna run it up and through. So what we're going to do is uninstall this cow piece so we can run it up in that little area and then run the harness up to the passenger four banger. All right, to remove the cow piece, all you have to do is unscrew five of these uh, little plastic pieces and it should come loose just like so. All right, so we're gonna take the longer part of the harness and do the same exact thing. We're gonna run it up underneath the driver fender but instead of running it up to the driver four banger, we're gonna actually run this out and across the engine bay through the cowl area. Now that we got the wiring harness routed underneath the cowl and the cowl reinstalled, we're gonna take the light two wiring harness that goes to the passenger side and route it up to the passenger and get the four banger installed and going. So you, what you might have to do is pull on the harness to get a little bit more excess. And then once you have some excess, you're gonna just run it up on the side area of the passenger fender. And then we're gonna go ahead and get the four banger installed and then connect it. Okay, now we're going to actually mount up the four banger. This product is freaking awesome. We're gonna be doing the amber light um, for our A-pillar bracket. So it's already installed on our U-bracket. This is what comes with the actual four banger Morimoto universal pod. So it's very simple. It's just a bolt and of course on the bottom it, it has a slotted area so you can adjust and put it to whatever position you're wanting. And you also can decide on how you want it angled on the vehicle. So great universal aesthetic to it. So there's a washer and then a nut. So you're just going to literally put that on there and then we're gonna just tighten this bad boy down. All right, now that you got both four bangers on passenger and driver, you're literally going to take the harness that's on the four banger and you're going to insert those into those plastic clips that I showed you earlier. All right, now that that harness is connected onto the bracket, you're going to literally just plug in the wiring harness to the other part of the connector. All right, now that you got the harness fully plugged in on the driver's side, you're going to head over to the passenger side and do the exact same thing. And then towards the end, of course, we'll literally button all of the harness up and get it all zip tied down and looking nice. But once you're finished with that, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the rest of the harness and continue on with the power and ground and getting that connected. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take off the bolt on the ground terminal. On this truck, it's just a 12. And then we're going to slide the ground on just like so. And then tighten it right back down. Alrighty, and we're gonna do the exact same thing on the positive side. And a cool thing about our battery on the power side is we actually have a fuse area built in to help not pop any of our relays. All right, now that we got the positive and ground hooked up to the battery, we're going to move on to the Morimoto switch. A really cool feature about this harness is that you can actually disconnect it from the main harness so it's easier to run it through the firewall. So if you do decide to drill into the firewall, Morimoto was very thoughtful and actually put a grommet on the harness to help prevent water intrusion inside the cab. And we're going to cut a very small sliver in the grommet piece and then run the switch through it. So we'll see you guys on the inside and get this finished up for y'all. All right, now that we got the harness ran through the firewall, we're going to connect it to the Morimoto switch. All you have to do is line up the three teeth that are in here to the male side, just like so. And then you're just gonna screw that bad boy and tighten it fully down. And once you got that connected, your next 
step is to decide on where you're wanting to put the switch. You could either do it beside the steering wheel, you could do it in the center console, depending on what your preference is, but you do have a decent amount of lead for that, which we thought of here at Morimoto for you guys. So once you get that, you're going to take a three quarter inch step bit and you're going to drill a hole so the actual switch will fit in there. And also one thing to take in consideration when installing your switch, make sure that there's nothing behind to actually snag when you're drilling or anything metal as well to shorten it out. And just like that, you've got some pot lights on your A-pillar brackets and in your bumper. But why would you stop there? We've made videos on the XB LED headlights on this truck. We've also made videos on the NSV light bar. We've went from front to back and showed you everything that we recommend at Headlight Revolution. So what you should do is type in your year make and model and see everything else that we have to offer for your truck. Be sure to like and subscribe and thank you so much for watching.